Hi, I'm Camilla Lawrence. I'm one of the women's health physiotherapists at Six Physio, and this video is all about the female pelvic floor. Um, the pelvic floor muscles are the muscles that fill in the underside of our pelvis. So they go from the pubic bone at the front of the pelvis all the way around underneath you, between your legs, and wrap up into the coccyx at the back here. So as they go from front to back, they wrap around the entrance to the urethra where you pee through, around the entrance to the vagina, and around the entrance to the back passage. And they've got five main functions, um, which are all fairly fundamental to um, things that we do on a daily basis. So number one, they're really important with regards to continence. Um, it's your pelvic floor muscles that hold everything in during the day um, so that you don't leak anywhere and it's the same muscles that let um, go when you go to empty your bladder or when you go to empty your bowels. Um, they also have a really important role to play in organ support, so this is their second function. Um, it's your pelvic floor muscles that support all of the organs that sit above them, so your bladder, um, your uterus in the middle and your bowel at the back um, of the pelvis. So if your pelvic floor muscles weren't there at the bottom of your pelvis, you'd look rather different. Um, they also have a role to play in supporting the joints in the pelvis, so your pubic symphysis joint at the front here and your sacroiliac joints at the back of the pelvis on either side here and here. Um, it's your pelvic floor muscles actually attach up into those joints um, and help to stabilise them and work intricately with your other deep core muscles, so your deep stomach muscles, your deep back muscles and your diaphragm at the top um, of the trunk to help stabilise that whole trunk region. Um, the fourth function is um, they have a role to play during um, labour and delivery, so it's your pelvic floor muscles that obviously help you relax during labour and delivery to allow that baby out and they have a very important role to play during sex, it's your pelvic floor muscles that give us that positive, hopefully, sensation during sex. So um, the reason we talk about that is because obviously when those muscles get weak, and that can happen at any time in life um, for lots of different reasons, pregnancy being a big one, um, but also delivery um, and um, obesity, age, um, as we go through the menopause, our pelvic floor muscles often can get weaker. Um, smoking can affect them, um, as can um, chronic constipation and chronic coughs um, or um, chest infections. So lots of repeated downward pressure on the pelvic floor um, over time can weaken those muscles. And when those muscles are weak, like any other muscle in the body, they just don't function as well. And we can end up with various problems. So the types of symptoms women describe when they've got some pelvic floor weakness are often either leaking of urine or unable to get to the loo on time, um, maybe leaking when they're coughing or sneezing. Um, possibly they're not able to control their bowels as well. Um, so again, they're rushing to the loo to get there and panicking that they're not gonna make it on there on time or maybe having accidents. They might develop um, some pelvic organ prolapse, which is when one of the organs organs in the pelvis drop down slightly with gravity and give a sensation of pressure or something sitting in the vagina area um, that's uncomfortable that wasn't there before. Um, or it might be that you're just feeling that the whole pelvis area is a bit more unstable than it was or that it feels more painful in the joints in the pelvis and that might be linked with pelvic floor weakness. Um, as can pain or lack of sensation during sex. So all of these symptoms um, can often be connected with um, some dysfunction um, in the pelvic floor muscles. Um, so we're going to talk through some really simple exercises that you can get going with um, to try and um, get yourself on the road to recovery. So the best way to strengthen up the pelvic floor muscles are to squeeze them. Um, and for most women, the best cue to use is to imagine that you're trying to hold in a fart. So you're going to squeeze with the muscles around your back passage, pulling in and up for as far as you can and then letting go afterwards. For some women that's difficult um, and it might be easier to imagine um, or for them to imagine that they're sitting on the loo having a pee and they're going to try and stop themselves mid-flow. So again it's that same squeeze and lift up inside and then full release. What the pelvic floor muscles are not, it's not your buttocks so you shouldn't be bobbing up and down when you do these exercises, it's not your thighs so your legs shouldn't be moving in and out when you do them, um, it's not your back muscles so you shouldn't be moving your spine as you do these pelvic floor exercises and it's not your tummy so your tummy shouldn't be gripping and tensing really really hard you really shouldn't see anything moving on the outside it should just be a squeeze and lift in the muscles underneath you um, and really importantly once you've squeezed those muscles the next important thing is to let them go so a big part of your pelvic floor exercises is the letting go just as much as the squeezing in. We don't want to be walking around all day holding our pelvic floor muscles in and up constantly. That makes them tired and sore and angry. Um, they need to let go in between each squeeze. So when you're doing your pelvic floor exercises, you want a nice strong squeeze in and up 
and then a full release afterwards. And importantly, your breathing will help with these. Um, interestingly, your diaphragm, which sits above your pelvic floor muscles, um, your pelvic floor muscles at the bottom of your pelvis, right down at the bottom of the trunk, um, they mirror each other. So often, well, well, normally when we're breathing, your pelvic floor and your diaphragm should go up and down together. So it really helps if you can do your pelvic floor squeezes um, and try and aim for that contraction on the breath out. That might seem a bit unnatural at first, um, but the more you do it, the better it will get. So what we get most of our patients to do is to think about taking a gentle breath in before they start or to prepare. And then as they breathe out, that's when you think about that squeeze and lift. So holding in a fart or stopping yourself from peeing and then letting go afterwards. So taking a breath in to prepare and on the breath out, squeeze and lift and then let go afterwards. So there's two types of squeezes that we get people to do initially with their pelvic floor um, muscles when they're um, having some problems. Number one is a squeeze and release. So really simple, um, just like I've been talking about so far. So breath in to prepare and on the breath out, squeeze and lift as strongly as you can and then full release afterwards. So literally a second to squeeze and a second to release, about as fast as that. And you want to do up to 10 of those in a row. The second exercise is a squeeze and hold. So these are a longer exercise. They work more on the endurance of the muscle. So just as important. Um, and what you want to be doing with these, in, again, is trying to engage on the breath out. So breathing in to prepare, breathing out and squeeze and lifting, and then seeing if you can hold that squeeze for a few seconds before you go to let go. Gold standard is being able to hold them for 10 seconds, releasing fully and then ringing out then trying to repeat that 10 times. Don't worry if you can't hold for 10 seconds initially, that's totally fine. Um, what you don't want to be doing is counting to 10 and it's let go after number two or three. So try and work out where your limit is, what's the point where you feel your pelvic floor releasing and letting go by itself, and then aim to see if you can add on another second, maybe every week or so. So you want to be taking a breath in to prepare for those long ones. As you breathe out, squeeze and lift and then try and hold for a few seconds. So if it's three or four or five seconds or more, try and see if you can gently breathe while you're holding. It's hard, but it's really important that you don't train your pelvic floor to only work when you're holding your breath. Um, that's not going to be useful when you're trying to get to the loo, for example, or when you're coughing and sneezing. It needs to be able to function whilst you're breathing. So those longer holds, nice long holds for as many seconds as you can and then release fully before you do the next one. And you're gonna do 10 of those as well. So 10 of the fast and 10 of the slow is a set of pelvic floor exercises. If you know you've got some weakness in your pelvic floor, you're getting some symptoms, um, you ideally want to be doing these about three times a day. Try and spread them out so they're not all back to back at the end of the day when you're knackered anyway. Um, so try and see if you can um, give it at least a couple of hours between each set. Um, if you're finding that actually you're just wanting to keep your pelvic floor going but you're not getting any symptoms, once a day is probably enough and that's kind of what we should all be doing for the rest of our lives. Brushing your teeth is a good time to do this. Um, you do that anyway. Um, if you are postnatal and you've just had a baby, whether it by, be by C-section or vaginal delivery, um, we'd often recommend that for the first six weeks you really try and up these as much as possible. And we often get women to do these with every feed during the day. So whether you're breastfeeding or bottle feeding, um, you're sitting still and you can do these exercises gently um, at the start of each feed, that would be ideal. And again, they're spread out nicely then during the day. With regards to where to do them, you can do these exercises anywhere. Um, if you know your pelvic floor muscles are weak or if you're struggling with some of the squeezes that we've just been talking about and finding where those muscles are, then maybe start them in lying down because you're not working against gravity in that position and it will be easier. As you get better at them, I would progress up into sitting and then eventually up into standing. Um, and um, you can make them harder as a result. So doing them in standing will feel harder than doing it in lying down. So have a play around with that and, uh, and work at your level. Um, if you're sitting here listening to this and thinking, I have no idea what she's talking about and I can't find these muscles, don't fear. Um, but if you're getting some symptoms, it's very common to have problems with your pelvic floor at any stage of life, um, but it's not normal. It's never normal and we can sort these issues out. Um, but you probably just need to come and see one of our teams. So go and see a good woman's health physiotherapist um, and we can talk you through some 
bigger um, or some more detailed specifics with you and um, that are a bit more individualized and get you working the right muscles in the right way and show you how to do that. 